Fussing on Coulomb's Law. There are four fundamental forces in nature, and this brings us to the second one. Back in the fall, we learned about Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation from 1687. Back in that day, Newton was able to calculate the strength of the gravitational force between two masses, such as the Earth and the Moon. Yet, he didn't understand how gravity worked. That took into the early 1900s when Einstein developed his theory of general relativity, which said that masses interact with space, and it's the bending or warping of space due to masses that we feel as gravity. Newton said that the force of gravity depends directly on the two masses, such as the mass of the Earth and the mass of the Moon, but then inversely proportional to the distance between them squared. That proportionality becomes an equation when we use the gravitational constant. Now let's fast forward about a hundred years to Coulomb's law, where Charles Augusta Coulomb devised the relationship between the electric force between two charges. So here we have a hydrogen atom, and we see we have a proton and an electron. So if he devised that the force of attraction between the electron and proton is given by the strength of their charges, directly proportional to, but yet inversely proportional to the distance between them squared. This force becomes a direct relationship with the constant K, or the electrical constant. Now if you notice, there's two major similarities between these laws. They're both directly proportional to, say, the masses in gravity's case, or charges in Coulomb's law case. They're also both inversely proportional to the distance between the objects squared. Yet with that similarity, there's a major difference between these two forces. And that difference lies in the constants of proportionality. If we look at G, the, con the gravitational constant, its value is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, whereas the electrical constant, K, is 9 times 10 to the 9th power. Thus, the electric force is nearly 20 powers of 10 times stronger than the gravitational force. Now, although the electrical force is that much stronger, the other difference is that it's much shorter range. That is, this electrical force is very huge between electrons and protons in the atom. However, the gravitational force is much more long range. In fact, Einstein called it action at a distance. That is, the force of gravity, even though it's so much smaller, can act all the way out to the distance of the moon to keep the moon in orbit around the Earth, and also all the way from the sun to the Earth to keep the Earth in orbit around the sun. So although there's some similarities between these forces, that is, they're both inverse square relationships, there are some major differences in terms of their strengths and also the distances over which they act. Let's learn more about Coulomb's Law and charges. Charge is to electricity and magnetism as mass is to forces and motion. Charge is symbolized by the letter Q. The units of charge are the Coulomb, named after Charles Augusta Coulomb, pictured right here. Hi, Chuck. Now, the fundamental charge, we've talked about protons and electrons. The charge of one proton or one electron is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. However, the typical amounts of charge you see, say, by charging the electroscope or the fun fly stick, would be on the order of microcoulombs, where one microcoulomb, there's the abbreviation for micro, is one millionth of a coulomb, or 1 times 10 to the minus 6th coulombs. Charles Augusta Coulomb published his Coulomb's Law in 1784 in his memoirs. This describes the amount of force between two charges. Let's call this charge Q1 and this charge Q2. You notice that the force depends directly on the amounts of charge and inversely on the distance between the charges. He called that distance R. Thus the electric force is equal to a constant of proportionality k times q1 times q2 divided by r squared. Notice that the force depends 
directly on the amount of charge. That is, if Q1 or Q2 becomes larger, the force will also become larger. And if we increase the distance between the charges, the electric force will decrease. That is, the electric force is inversely proportional to the distance between the charges. Conceptual example number one. Again, let's remember that the force between Q1 and Q2 when they're separated by a distance r is given by Coulomb's law as kq1 times q2 over r squared. What happens if the force on one of the charges is doubled? That is, we make q2 2q2. Well, the new electric force here is going to be equal to k times q1, but now times 2q2. And there's still the same separation, so over r squared. For convenience, let's put the 2 right in front of the k, since this is all multiplication. Rewriting this gives us 2 times k times q1 times q2 divided by r squared. But look closely. kq1 q2 divided by r squared is just the original electric force here when q1 and q2 are separated by the distance r. Thus, we have 2 times that amount of force now. So we can see the new electric force is 2 times the old electric force. It doubles. And I hope that makes sense, because since the electric force depends directly on charge, if we double one of the charges, that overall force will double as well. In the previous example, we determined what happened to the electric force if one of the charges changes. But what happens to the force if the distance between the charges changes, or in this example, if that distance is doubled? That is, we move charge Q2 twice the distance away from Q1, and we'll call that 2R. Well, let's make a prediction first. We know that electric force depends inversely on the distance between the charges. So if I increase this distance, the electric force should decrease, but by how much if I double the distance? So now we have the new electric force is equal to kq1q2 divided by 2r squared. Well, what is 2r squared? Well, 2r times 2r is 4r squared. So let's put that in the denominator. So now we have the new electric force is k times q1, q2, divided by 4r squared. But if we look again, here's our original electric force. It's k, q1, q2, divided by r squared. So we have an extra 4, or 1 fourth here. So we see we have a quarter amount of the original electric force. That is, it decreases by a factor of 4. You will be challenged to do more conceptual examples like this in class and to write out the new electric force in terms of whatever changes about the charge and the distance and comparing it to the original electric force of kq1q2 over r squared. Now that we've completed two conceptual examples about how the electric force changes based on changing the charge or distance, let's try a mathematical example to calculate the electric force outright. Here we have a charge of positive 6 microcoulombs separated by a distance of 10 meters with another charge of negative 2 microcoulombs. We're going to use Coulomb's equation, but now we need to calculate, so we need to know what this constant of proportionality is. Where k is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared. So our units of force will still be newtons, and to keep that true for this equation we need to cancel out the meters from the distance and the coulombs from the charges. And of course those are squared. So let's calculate this. So the electric force will be equal to K, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times Q1, which is 6 microcoulombs. But remember, we need to convert that into coulombs. And since a microcoulomb is 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, that makes this 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And similarly, negative 2 microcoulombs is negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. We'll divide all that by the distance apart, which is 10 meters, and we have to square that. So pause the video for a moment, 
do your calculations. Be sure to input the exponents correctly into your calculator as well. So on the numerator, I got negative 0 0.108 newton meters squared. And the denominator we can see is going to be 10 squared or 100 meters squared. Completing the calculation, I got negative 1.08 times 10 to the negative third newtons. Now this negative sign just represents that this is an attractive force between the positive 6 microcoulombs and the negative 2 microcoulombs. You could also see if both these charges were positive, I get a positive force. If they were both negative charges, I would also get a positive force and that would be a repulsive force. Thank you for watching and see you in class.